So a quick update from a video I made earlier this year. Now, I'm one for getting cards in the hands of people. Everybody wants to have hands-on with the hardware, and nothing is arguably more true than AI developers. The point of getting hardware into the hands of these people so they can experiment, so they can test, so they can see what works and what doesn't, where the software works, where the software doesn't, where the hardware has limitations, is becoming an important part of how we're developing software for, what is this, Web 4.0 at this point? The more you buy, the more you save. Um, and earlier this year, the company that I work with, Tensone, actually started releasing dev kits uh, that you can go and buy online. If you've got dollars, you could go out and buy one. They launched the uh, Grayskull E75 and E150 chips. And we did a video unboxing those chips on this channel. And I interviewed one of the Cena fellows, uh, Dr. Yasmina, about the hardware and the software stack as it stands. Customers to developers, it's a dev kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are two different cards, uh, E75, which is, which is a smaller card, a smaller... 75, because like it's 75 watts. 75 watts. And then this guy is e, E150 again, again with a reference to wattage. It's, it's slightly bigger. Now, they've not been quietly working behind the background um, for no reason. And today they're launching the next generation of that development hardware. And that starts with their next generation wormhole processor. So over Grayskull, this is a new chip that's double the power. So the base chip is 150 watts and you can either get a card called the N150 with one of them on or a card called the N300 with two of them on. And the goal here is increase in memory up from 8 gigs to 12. We're now up to GDDR6 at a 192-bit bus. And the whole point of these cards is, again, more development, higher performance, uh, more memory capacity. And you might think 12 gigs is a little low. That's enough to run, say, um, you know, a Llama 2 7 billion model. But where's the fun in that? Well, the important thing here is the how Tense Torrent is addressing scale out with these cards. So not only do each of the cards or each of the chips have um, 80 10 6 cores at one gigahertz, which is about 292 tops of FP8, they also have 3.2 terabit per second of ethernet connection. So that's um, what, 16, 200 gigabit connections that means that they can go between cards or to other cards and the whole point here is you can scale out your compute what a lot of companies are doing right now is having high performance individual cards and then slow connectivity out when you have to scale out tense torrents flipping that around and saying we're going to have network front and center as number one so that when you do need to do the broadcasts when you do need to do the important things of funneling data between the compute elements uh, of your of your data center, then networking is a number one customer, and that's what Wormhole's all about. So the first card, the Wormhole N150, that's just one chip, that's just 150 watts. Uh, that's gonna be available for, let me get the price right here, $999, which for a dev card is pretty much what you'd expect. If you want to double up and get the Wormhole N300, then that's uh, $13.99. I'm just looking at the pricing here. So that's two wormhole chips. That's 300 watts. It has an 8-pin connector. Um, and the idea is that it just takes up one PCI slot uh, in your device. Now, those are the cards, and they're gonna be, they should be available from today when this video goes out. What Tense Torrent is also doing are providing developer workstations. So this is dedicated hardware with four of these uh, dual chip wormhole cards um, in a couple of form factors to enable developers to go feel out what the um, mesh architecture for the networking is like between cards. Or you can just have them act as individual inference cards as well. And the first system that's uh, coming out of block is uh, called the uh, TT, that's Tens Torrent, the Loudbox. Um, now, you might think as a marketing uh, term, Loudbox, surely you don't want loud in the name, but there's a point here which we'll get into in a bit. The Loudbox is based on a, a dual socket Intel Isolate Supermicro system. So it's using their design with a custom front panel. I'll show up some pictures. Uh, and this, it, this inside has 
yeah, two uh, eight core third gen scalable Intel uh, Ice Lake processors. These are 2.8 gigahertz base, 105 watt TDP processors. So pretty middle ground. These are Xeon Silvers. Coming with 512 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory, RDIMM ECC, you know, that standard stuff. Uh, there's going to be some uh, DRAM slots free here for anybody to go and uh, bump that up to, say, 768 gigs. Um, it's going to have a 3.8 terabyte U.2 drive, PCI 4x4. Um, so, you know, high speed uh, SSD storage, but not, you know, a mountain for like storage server. Four of these wormhole cards air cooled, so that's eight chips. With four warp 100 interconnect cables, so that's enabling the, a 2x4 mesh of these cards, and then also two QSFP DD cables. Um, these are 400 gigabit Ethernet cables to scale out if you want to buy multiple systems. Two 10 gig Ethernet ports powered by an Intel 550 uh, AT2, uh, IPMI, that sound of stuff. And then the power supply situation depends whether you're in a 110 volt or a 240 volt, 240 volt region. Um, the 240 volt region uses a higher efficiency part. That's basically it. The price for this system is 12,000 bucks, which you may think, hang on, workstation? That's quite a lot. Um, if you go and price up, say, any NVIDIA or an AMD workstation, they're going to come out to a minimum this number for high end parts. And the whole point here is that it's a developer workstation. It's not going to be. Um, a system that uh, it, we're so used to like gaming system or you know a rendering workstation this isn't that this is for AI development and the whole point here is that you're using four cards in this once you get software that works on a four card system you then go deploy it in the data center where you've got servers with 16 of these cards and then those 16 cards scale out to 192 cards in a rack or across multiple racks so by getting a system like this now and developing for it now, you can then you know, mitigate some of the issues that you might get in production when you scale up, rather than just having one card and developing one card now. Or you might just have you know, a mass inference workload that you want to run um, that runs individually per card. Also, you know, that makes sense as well. So this is called the loud box. It's not actually meant to be loud. It's just the fact that it's air-cooled. And the point is that Tense Torrent is also announcing the TT Quiet Box, which is a liquid cooled version. Um, so, whereas the Loud Box is based on a Supermicro platform, the Quiet Box is based on a Tyan platform. And let me get the specs up here. It's going to have the same four wormhole N300 cards, so that's four wormhole, uh, eight wormhole chips, even, um, except that now they're liquid cooled and the CPU is liquid cooled. Um, instead of having a dual socket uh, Intel system, we're going to have a single socket AMD Zen 4 general base system. So this is the Epic 8124P. So Zen 4, 16 cores, 32 threads, up to 3 gigahertz and 125 watts. So the CPU is more efficient, you get more performance, and you don't have to deal with NUMA issues with a quiet box. 512 gigabytes of memory as before, except this time it's DDR5 4800 rather than DDR4 3200. So not only do you not have the NUMA memory issues, you also get an increase in memory bandwidth with this system as well, going from DDR4 to DDR5. Um, that's going to matter a lot in a number of workloads. Same storage, 3.8 terabytes of uh, NVMe U.2 PCI 4x4. Um, again, the Warp 100 internet cables and the QSFP DD 400 gigabit Ethernet cables. Uh, that stays the same. Custom liquid cooling for the CPU and all the cards, so they're going to run quieter. Um, and arguably, you know, if there's some frequency headroom and some of that stuff gets opened up later on, maybe it can be pushed up a little to get a bit more performance out of it. Um, power supply situation in this instance is just a 1650 watt platinum uh, power supply, uh, two RJ4510 gig base T Ethernet ports, and this one also has a couple of one gig ports as well, which the uh, the loud box doesn't. And again, IPMI. The cost for this system is going to be 15,000. Um, and whereas the previous system ships in four to six weeks, this ships in six to eight weeks. So these are both pre-orders for the systems, for developer systems. And also, if you hadn't noticed by the pictures already, this one's a bit blingier. Um, normally with developer workstations, they're functional. They're, they're you know, design, they're, they're, they're form over design. So the whole point is it just sits under a desk. Uh, it, it, looks unimposing and you just run stuff this one it's actually got see-through windows um i haven't asked if there's rgb leds in there 
but the pictures they've got show the purple light up, so that might be, you know, some sort of black light uh, on the device. What I'm going to hopefully see is some of these systems at the end of August. I'm going to be uh, in the Bay Area for hot chips, and that's where their office is. I'm hopefully going to have another interview with Jim Keller. He owes me a, an update about what's going on with the company, and he's got some other things going on that hopefully we'll get an update for. Um, but yeah, the, the, the quiet box looks a bit flashier. And so for your extra 25% cost, well, you're not getting more performance on the AI card specifically. You're getting better cooling, you're getting better CPU, you're getting better memory, and something that ultimately looks better, if that matters to you. You just have to gonna have you're just gonna have to wait another couple of weeks for it. These systems don't come with an operating system installed, however, Tenstar recommends Ubuntu 20.04, that's the Fosca Fossa, Focal Fossa. Um, version and then from there you can download all of the uh, Tense Torrent drivers from the website and the software stack from GitHub because that's all open source. You can either use the Buda, which is their uh, equivalent to CUDA, so that's the uh, uh, bottom up, uh, sorry, that's the top down, and then you have Metallium, which is the bottom up. And the whole point here is that they offer both ways depending on whether you want the high level language. Uh, to use generic libraries or frameworks, or you have the low-level lang language if you want to optimize to the nth degree. And uh, it's clear that Tens Torrent's partners and customers down the line do want to optimize for the nth degree. I know some of the AI hardware startups don't want you accessing that lower layer. They're just focused on the, the high-level uh, framework support because they think that expands their developer use case, and yet they don't offer developer kits, which is really weird. So I'm really glad that for Tens Torrent at least, you know, the developer kit stuff wasn't just a one and done. They are actually iterating on this. So currently it's a wormhole. That's their new one. We know that black hole's coming down the line. Hopefully they'll offer developer kits for that. Um, sounds like it's perhaps coming next year. Uh, but for now, they're big. Their push on the commercial side, at least, you know, aside from their IP customers, is going to be on uh, this, this product's wormhole either you know as dev kits or the word dev workstations and then you have galaxy for the data center which is ultimately where the software is going to be deployed um if you've got any questions for jim keller or any of the team when i go visit then please do let me know down in the comments um interesting to see how they're thinking about and what they're thinking about i should also get a chance to bump into Weihan. he's the architecture behind the risk 5 ascalon cores uh, so we'll see how that's progressing as well um if you love the content on this channel, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. I have a newsletter as well, which is more focused on the business aspects uh, of the industry. Please do go check that out at more-more.com. And I'll catch you on the next one.